All right? And the answer is yes. Males still have uh, statistically significantly bigger cranial capacities than females, uh, even when we control for body size. And the, P, the F value is 6.65, and the significance is P equal 0 0.01. But the partial eta squared has come down quite a bit. You might recall that it was, I think, 0.34. 34% of the variability in cranial capacity could be accounted for by the independent variable sex, male, female. Now it's been reduced very substantially, down to 6 uh, 6%. So it, the covariates had a significant impact uh, on the um, uh, the difference in the means, and we can get our adjusted means in the next table. In fact, they are right here. So now male mean, once it's adjusted for the covariate of body size, has, <coughs> excuse me, has been reduced to 1427, which is less than the initial estimate, which is just the ordinary mean of 1474 rounded. All right, and that's what analysis of covariance does. It reestimates the means to account for the differences in the co the effect of the covariate. So it it provides us with an unbiased mean, if you will, that's not biased by this effect of body size. Females, are, by contrast, their cranial capacity be, c capacity has co increased, if you will, um, from uh, the initial estimate of 1270 excuse me, to 1301. All right, so these means don't really exist in reality. Female means, the real female mean and the male mean are here. But for the purposes of an analysis, the ANCOVA estimates a hypothetical mean that uh, would uh, be uncontaminated by the effects of the covariate. So these are adjusted, putting everyone on a, playing le a, pl a level playing field for body size. This is what you would predict people's cranial capacity to be for females and males. It's still statistically significant. Now, that's how you do an analysis of variance. I want to, and if that's all you're interested in doing and you want to kind of understand how it does it and you want to know to test the homogeneity regression assumption and look at the output, uh, you can, and that's all you're interested in, then you can stop this video now. Because what I'm also going to do is something interesting if you want to understand the relationships between apparently disparate uh, analyses. And before I do so, uh, I'm going to mention that a lot of people criticize analysis of covariance because of that hypothetical element of, well, males and females do differ in body size. And so it doesn't make, it's, it doesn't really make sense to interpret these means as meaningful, uh, because it's such a hypothetical phenomenon, uh, that, uh, that isn't reality in nature. And pe so there are other analysis of covariance uh, studies that people do. Oftentimes, um, they want to know the difference between means and groups, uh, but unfortunately, they differ on socioeconomic status, for example. And socioeconomic status has an impact on the dependent variable of interest, and they want to analyze the difference between the means controlling for differences in socioeconomic status. And you have no control over that. You know, people have their respective socioeconomic statuses associated with their families. And people argue, well, you really have to interpret those analyses in a very um, cautious way because socioeconomic status exists and there are differences between people in socioeconomic status and groups. And it's a very fictitious hypothetical model to try to make everyone on a level playing field in socioeconomic status. Now those criticisms are leveled very frequently against ANCOVA, but for whatever reason that I don't understand, the same criticism is leveled against multiple regression very rarely even though, as I will demonstrate, a multiple regression analysis can do exactly the same analysis as ANCOVA, uh, as I just did in this example with head size, uh, with cranial capacity and, and sex. Now, here, this is how you do it. You go, this is how you do an ANCOVA in multiple regression. So if you're more comfortable with multiple regression, this is how you could do it. And I want to show the relationships between the two. So, um, I'm not going to test the interaction. Maybe I will. I'll see how long it takes me. Um, actually, I could do it very quickly. Uh, so to test the in interaction of homogeneity of regression assumption, you would have to create your interaction term. All right, and I've already done that here. 
uh, because that's what we tested in the ANOVA. So